the morally correct stance is to prevent it from happening. There is no indication that China is planning to invade Taiwan. If the United States increases the escalation, they might do it. Uh, in that case, the bars are down. You can't say if you move on to war with China, we're basically all finished. But there's really no point considering a remote contingency when there are actual events taking place, like the US escalation of the confrontation with China. China's not saintly by any means, nothing like it. But if you look at the facts, it's US escalation. The US has now enlisted, trying to enlist Europe in its confrontation with China by expanding NATO. US has expanded NATO to the Indo-Pacific region, turning it into an international military system under US control. Uh, all of this is going on. We can, if we like, talk about the possible contingency of a Taiwan, a China invading Taiwan, for which there is no indication that it could happen if we continue the provocation. Remember, the provocation is serious. It's both in the military dimension and in the commercial dimension. Quite openly, what I've been referring to is public policy, very open, and it is increasing the threat. You put nuclear capable B-52s in flying distance to China with nuclear tipped cruise missiles, that's provocation. I would suggest distinguishing between Western propaganda and the facts. So let's take China's military buildup. This is reported regularly by CIPRI, Swedish Peace Research Institute. You can pick it up on the internet. You will find that China's military expenditures for the past 10 years, per capita military expenditures, are a flat, straight line. They have not increased. Of course, the uh, China has increased its uh, military as the population increases, but it's way below U.S. military expenditure. And the U.S. is far above in technological advances. So yes, and uh, China, remember, is faced with security problems at every border. The United States is faced with no security problems, but U.S. military expenditures dwarf. They're about the same as the next 10 countries altogether. It's a per capita far beyond China. So yes, uh, there is. And what, when we talk about this uh, economic imperialism, exactly what are we referring to? We're referring to investment and development programs throughout Eurasia, expanding to Africa, expanding even to Latin America. The U.S. is trying to stop them, has found no way to do it, except by escalating in the military and economic dimensions by trying openly, publicly, to try to prevent China's economic you development. See, I said explicitly, China is by no means saintly. Plenty of criticisms you can make of China. But I would like to describe the world situation as it is, not as it's presented by US-British propaganda. Just one sentence, brief. Sure. First, the term greater Israel has nothing to do with the Bible, nothing to do with what might have happened 2,000 years ago. In fact, I've never heard that suggested until you brought it up. Greater Israel refers to what is happening on the ground. It's a description of what is happening as Israel has moved systematically to integrate parts of the West Bank illegally into Israel itself. That's what greater Israel means. No genetics, no history, no Bible. That it's illegal is not a matter of selecting sources. 
it is selecting 100% of the sources outside of the Israeli high court. Outside of that, there's a 100% agreement, including the highest Israeli legal authorities like Theodore Meron, that it is illegal. No debate about that. We can um, put aside genetics. We can put aside stories about what happened 2,000 years ago. We can look just at what is happening on the ground. And it is very clear, no selectivity within Israel itself. There is sharp discrimination against Palestine, Palestinians, which should be overcome. In the West Bank, there are totally illegal activities going on, which are creating a greater Israel integrated within Israel. In Gaza, it's a horror story. As far as American opinion is concerned, you're totally wrong. I live with this constantly. The shift from admiring Israel as a wonderful social democratic state in the 70s, declining later, took a sharp step backwards when Israel began its murderous activities in Gaza. I saw it right in front of my eyes. When I was giving talks on Israel-Palestine, I used to have police protection to protect it against Jewish violence. After caste led, shifted radically. Israel became a pariah and it shifted very sharply. It has nothing to do with anti-Semitism in the United States, which is there, but pretty marginal, much worse in my childhood, much worse when I went to Harvard in the 50s very much worse then. That's not changed. What's changed is the activities of Israel. If Israelis want to blind themselves to the consequences of what they're doing, it's their choice, they're going to suffer from it. No, no if, if you're already on a few minutes extra, and maybe it's a little uh, bit chutzpah, but um, I, you know, many Israelis, what they say is, and, and this is comes from an honest place amongst the Israelis, what can we actually do to make a difference? The, the onus is on them because we've tried and they keep rejecting peace. This is a le legitimately very popular opinion amongst the Israelis. So I know you have to go, but if you could maybe respond in just a few words, what you think Israel can do today to actually progress peace in, in a viable sense, I, I think our viewers would love to hear that. And I'll have to leave and you can go on if you like. Sure. Uh, the, uh, within Israel proper, it's Israel's business just like it's the business of other countries to deal with the improper activities that are taking place within them. So I, th I think my, I have opinions about what Israel ought to do, but it's up to Israel to rectify the sharp discrimination against Palestinians within Israel. In the occupied territories, it's an international problem. Everyone has a stake. The fact that 100% of relevant opinion regards it as an Israeli occupation and illegal activities in the occupied territories makes it an international problem. And there, what Israel should stop to do is, first of all, stop the savage destruction of Gaza, allow Gazans to live like human beings in the West Bank, put an end to the programs of creating a greater Israel which I say again, has nothing to do with the Bible or history, but with the reality on the ground, put an end to that, allow the Palestinians self-determination. I have my own views as to how the outcome should be, but we haven't gone into that and it's not really relevant. That's it, that's what Israel should do. And I'm afraid I'll have to leave.